Starting off with our university, Maharshi International University, it was founded by Maharshi Mahesh Yogi in 1973 in the U.S., and it was to add the idea of consciousness, consciousness, knowledge, intelligence, receptivity, awareness of the student to education. Now, it sounds like this must be obvious because education is not about teaching. It's not about a broadcast mode. It's about what's learned. It's about what you can understand. Otherwise, there's knowledge everywhere. There's libraries, online courses, and so on. But most universities don't have a way. They don't have a proven scientific, logical way to, to increase your ability to know, not just what they're delivering to you, but your ability to know. Consciousness in this context means the inner intelligence of the student. Consciousness we can think of as the idea that, well, I guess we all know what unconscious means. It means we don't know anything. <laughs> We're out. And fully conscious would be in every discipline, in every culture. There's knowledge of very aware, very enlightened people in the historical record. So somewhere in between that, we are all. And if each one of us even has a range of consciousness of awareness. Maybe we're dull or tired sometimes, and other times we're more alert and awake. So how do we raise ourselves up that spectrum? How do we turn that parameter, that dial, and increase our consciousness so we can learn more at the same time? That's what we have at our university. And it came from Maharshi teaching this technique of, of it was a meditation technique taught around the world. It was well known that meditation made people more alert, more balanced, more aware, but it hadn't been integrated into education yet. And that's what we did. So he founded a university to do that. We're a strong and well-established university known for our research and this innovation approach to education that we have. We received over 26 to $28 million in research grants from the government and research institutions and foundations, indicating respect and honor for the academic excellence of the faculty in the university. We do have a strong faculty worldwide, many with PhDs and strong academic experience and a global reputation. One way to think of the goal of education would be that, that we're always seeking more. We always want to know what's beyond what we have now. If we have any scope of job or finance or positions, family, and it, we always want more. We want to be more, to have more, to give more, to enrich those around us. And even in science, in science, this diagram shows, this, this old lithograph shows that even if we knew all about the heavens and the earth and the sciences, physics, botany, biology, all of that, we still want to know more. So this depicts someone who's looking out to the heavens, saying, well, how does the universe work? How does everything work? How do I work? Not just science on the outside, engineering, technology, but how do I work? So bringing that into education is important, and that's part of the mission and goal and accomplishment of our university. We can see that in society even, because in different areas of development through the ages, Stone Age was very crude, a very rough level of life, not much knowledge, moving into Iron Age, knowing about how to utilize materials and resources in the earth, building those, giving structure to them and dynamics in terms of machines, moving those machines to be electronic, electronic level, utilizing invisible waves, electromagnetic waves, channeled through materials of copper and, and metallic structures like that and then connecting those up to a global computer system, a global intelligence system. So intelligence is really the key to this age. We're not an iron age anymore, a factor age. We're an age of intelligence, a computer age. And where is it? Where does this intelligence come from? It comes from us. It's our consciousness, our understanding, our knowledge of life. And each of these shows a changing paradigm. And a paradigm means a worldview. It means our model and understanding of the world. Previous paradigms were what we could call objective science. Objective means out there, things, physics. Physics means physical, things that we can see and measure and weigh. And that model is very, it is objective, and that means that we consider subjectivity be, to be beyond consideration in that because humans were so complex, so ununderstandable in that age. And in that, what we did was we made simplifying assumptions that these non-systematic, non-organized living beings, the intelligence is fixed. And we know that idea of IQ, an intelligence quotient. It doesn't matter how much you know. You can't study for it or read a book to get some. You can take it in high school and college. 
It's your ability to know is what it alleges to measure. And the idea is it's fixed. You're, you're on 100 or you're 120. You're smart or, <laughs> or good luck. So it's, like, it's like recruiting for a basketball team. You're tall, good. You're not uh, short. Maybe you go on some other team, something like that. So universities and colleges, they screen for enrollment. They have all these entrance exams and backgrounds. And then the idea is to put as much information in as possible. This is an old view. And we have a new view that's now developing in the world. And that is that subject to development, us, how we work, not just how things work, but how we work, should also be scientific. And we should be able to apply systematic methods to it. And we could consider this as a technology where we can think of it as optimizing ourselves. And that really means optimizing our brain as a central part of that. If we can do that, if we can find a technique, and, and that's what we have and what I'll describe, then we can increase intelligence. You're not fixed. You're not, oh, you're 100 and good luck. No, you can be 110, 120, 130. And in fact, I'll show some, some brief research showing where exactly that's been demonstrated at universities in previous studies. And that means we can enliven the creative genius in everyone, not just locate it, but enliven it in everyone. This leads to the idea of a new educational system, and that's what we've been modeling and creating over the last 40, 45 years. And we've a lot of published research, over 600 different published and reviewed studies by the faculty, thousands of graduates and alumni. And this new system of education, if it's a new approach, it should have new results, and it does. And those are quantifiable, they're measured, it's a scientific result. This isn't some claim, all universities say, oh, live a better life be a better person. Where's the science? Where's the measurements? Where's the proof that it really works? So we have that. And where is the goal of education? Well, the goal of education is more knowledge. Not just more knowledge, but why? For more success. Why? For more happiness in life. Again, we want to be more, to have more, to give more to ourselves, to those around us, to our family, to our culture, to our country, to the world. This is the goal that everyone has in life, to have a better life and to share it. So not just academic book learning, which has been denigrated over periods of time. Okay, And full development, therefore, would mean what? It would mean, yes, knowledge of our discipline of computer science, the core knowledge, current activities and applications, but also so-called soft skills. And soft skills means, it means us. It means creativity, balance, intelligence, health, communication, all of these things. And these are now recognized as very important in all areas of life, personal life as well as professional. Sometimes it's talked about as being emotional intelligence, not just IQ, but EQ, our personality, who we are and what we do. And this is then an essential part of all full development. Okay.